Welcome to the NACE Gallery. My name is Kim Fjordbotten. Our gallery is located within the paint spot here in Edmonton. It's a wonderful conversation piece within our business that an artist can come in and see the work of another artist and be inspired and ask questions. I value how important this gallery is in the progress of an artist. Sometimes it's not until you have a deadline for a show that you actually stop your procrastination and take time to get those ideas out of your head and get them on paper and put them up in a gallery. So I think this uh, little space that we have for artists is really important. This show is quite stunning. And I'm very pleased today to invite Beth Peterson to talk about her recent show, Yesterday's Every Day. The show runs until January 16th, so I hope you come down and take a look at these works in person. Beth, welcome to the gallery. I love your work. Tell me a bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm an Edmonton artist. Uh, I have a BFA from the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, and I've mostly shown in the Edmonton area, some commercial galleries and some other um, artist-run centres too, occasionally. You work exclusively in oil. Why do you like oils? Um, mostly because it gives me more time for blending um, colours together. Um, I also like the vibrancy of the colour, it just has more depth to it. Um, and I like to work with colour a lot, so it, I think the intensity is something that I really like with the oils. Well, oil also lends itself to the careful rendering style of these materials. You really can feel your love for the, the subject matter. So, uh, what's the story behind the payphone? Um, so, my husband's grandfather um, got this phone. I think he knew someone who worked at AGT and they were changing them out. And he just decided he wanted to get one and um, have it changed so that he could use it as his own landline in his home. So he used it for years as just his regular indoor telephone. <laughs> so your husband knew it as a working phone? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. But and did he get it then? Like, did he inherit it? Uh, I think actually his uncle ended up getting the phone, so I thought it would be a nice moment to just to do the painting of it. And Ryan always thought that I would like it anyway for painting subject matter. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love the reflection and the coils and the shadow. And I was a little bit relieved to, to see that you didn't actually paint all the pages of the phone book, yeah. but everything else is is definitely rendered so beautifully. So. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. wanted to have some fun with it. So I did a little bit of collage with the yellow pages because yeah. you keep getting these books all the time and don't know what to do with them. So I thought that would be a good way to use them. Right, and they used to be in everybody's household and now nobody gets them. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's a good, good uh, way to memorialize it. I can imagine there's a lot of nostalgia for this. So is this something you would see being interested in? Like somebody could bring you like, I have this great nostalgia, like a telephone. I have this great nostalgic radio. Yeah. Like I can see people almost using them as portraits for, for a memory kind yeah. of. Yeah, I yeah. think I'd really enjoy doing something like that. If people were interested, they wanted something like that done. Yeah. Like maybe not every family member gets to take an actual object if it's someone passes on or whatever, but at yeah. least you can have that memento of a painting of the object. Oh, that's a lovely idea. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's good. Yeah. Um, so the other one, the spools of thread, what attracted you to this subject matter, this big painting behind you? Um, well, I really like the use of repetition, just kind of in everyday life, you just kind of see it in different places. And um, my friend's mom, she's a big sewer and weaver and stuff. And I was looking in her sewing room one day and I saw this nice rack of all these like perfectly placed spools and all the colors so I just got really excited about it because they're all lined up and you have all these different colors to work with so I told her a few years ago even um, I was like someday I need to do a painting of these so <laughs> finally I made it happen. Yeah um, with the spools I mean people still sew nowadays but it's not as common as it used to be so um, I was yeah conscious of like like the idea of um, slow or fast fashion and how we didn't used to have that. Like people didn't have like 20 different shirts and 20 different pairs of pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they yeah. had the ability and the independence to fix their own clothing when they needed to. Mm -hmm. Or make them if yeah, they needed yeah, to. Yeah. Them, yeah. yeah so, so I was thinking about that too. And then I always have this, I was thinking of like, when it comes to my work, just the way I paint, it's like, slow painting instead of like <laughs> yeah. like slow cooking or whatever just yeah. taking more time to put into it for the enjoyment of it yeah it's like 
almost therapeutic for me just to work like that. <laughs> yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, I really enjoy having some sort of a painting challenge. Oh, great. Get some excited. <laughs> great. So your choices for these beautiful utilitarian objects. They certainly have a nice nostalgia to them. I love the lawn chairs. Tell me how the lawn chairs evolved. Um, so I was camping with some friends and they're really into vintage items and even their old trailers, like probably from the 60s or 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and I just happened to look over and I saw this really nice shadow with the chairs and I was like, I really need to do something with that. So I took some photos of the chairs, but I didn't like the background. So it took me a while to kind of figure out what I was going to do to make the whole painting work with the chairs. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of ended up just doing some digital collage and I guess I was thinking about like Palm Springs or like Arizona and just having like someone on vacation and having the chairs out. So, yeah. yeah, and the plants and the, yeah. those uh, cement fences that were really of that era too is really nice. Yeah, yeah. These blocks, yeah. So your artist statement, you talk about um, these, you know, it's yesterday's uh, everyday objects and why you're attracted to things that were made um, a long time ago. They have a different aesthetic than they have now. So for the, for example, the fans behind you, what, uh, what about that design aesthetic was attractive? Um, I think it's the materials and even the color. They just, I've seen them in movies, like all the old fans, and I always liked looking at them. And, um, they happen to be in um, someone who's, he was a collector of vintage items and would sell them. And he had this whole room full of stuff. So I was taking photos and I saw the green fan and all the cords and I just got really excited about working on the details. And then there was some old blankets in the room. So I set it up to have like this nice warm color behind, like to make it kind of fit with the fans, like you're hot and you need to use a fan. <laughs> yeah, it's really so, nice. Yeah, so a lot of these old objects, like they'll still function if you plug them in. Um, they're easy to use. There's no electronics really involved that much. Like it's not complicated. So if something breaks, people can usually fix it themselves or there was someone nearby, a little repair shop where you could take things to get them fixed. But that doesn't really exist anymore. So it's kind of also why I'm interested in these objects. They have their own character and nice colors. and. Yeah. The designs are well thought out, except maybe not safety wise, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Common sense. Don't stick your finger in that fan. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, and your colors with the, um, the electric um, fence unit is are really lovely. So um, yeah. Talk to me about how you came up with the background for that. I mean, it's a lovely color. So yeah, I was, um, I think a lot of the time when I'm painting, I try to think of sort of almost complementary colors or like a warm and cool to have more contrast in the painting and then just having the colors work together so it's not like garish maybe but yeah. it just it has like a nice um I don't know the, the colors seem to work together so I have to think about that a bit and then I wanted to do some sort of a design in the background with like kind of like a wallpaper um and then I tried to balance it with warm and cool colors with the lights on the yeah. um, switch box and just to move your eye around when I was thinking of formal composition and stuff, I guess. Yeah. Beth, thanks so much for sharing your beautiful work with us. You've got to come down and see it in person. Uh, the show runs until January 16th. We're also open longer hours leading up to Christmas. So from Monday until Thursday next week, we're open till nine. So lots of time to come in and check out the show and maybe pick up a little gift for someone special. Our gallery is at 10032 81st Avenue, beautiful materials and more at paintspot.ca.